Good day, guys. Jesse here from JP Tuning again. Uh, today we are going to go through a seal head swap on a DBO Topaz 2. Uh, the reason that we do the seal head swap is because, unfortunately, in the world of mountain biking, there are a few frames out there that don't that aren't terribly nice to shocks. Um, a couple of them being like a trunnion design shock that uses the shock as a structural part of the frame which is all well and good um, if the shock is sitting dead straight and cycling up and down through its stroke nicely uh, when that frame is on the piss either that way that way or that way obviously it puts a lot of load on the shock when it puts load on the shock like that the thing that tends to have a bit of a hard time is this green seal head here so what we're going to do is replace that with the new and improved seal head that DVO have created. Uh, that ensures that these frames that are, uh, how do we put it politely, uh, a bit shit, um, can basically the shot can stand up to those frame designs um, and those misalignment issues. So we're taking this big beefcake here and we're going to swap them out so that it will stand up to those frames. All right. Get into it. So inside the shock the oil system um, and the whole damper unit is under pressure. The pressure is via this bladder that's inside here so before we take anything apart we want to get rid of as much of that pressure as we can and the way we do that is by letting the air out of that guy. Now what that means is all the oil is now um, under a lot less stress so when we go and crack the seal off uh, we don't end up oil spraying everywhere. Right so the fastest and most efficient way I find to do this is to just crack the seal head off um, away from the damper body. Um, best way to do this is fit it into the vise so uh, you either need a set of soft jaws or like mine here I have rubberized inserts attached into the vise so that you don't scratch everything up. Attach that, grab your wrench and just undo this guy. You'll see the seal head will just slowly come away from the damper body. There we go. As you can see the damper body is full of oil um, as we're going to use different oil when we rebuild it, we'll just even though that's clean Gonna get rid of that guy. If this was all filthy, you'd want to clean that out um, and ensure that everything is spotless because this is the same shock we use for the air can service. Um, it hasn't been ridden. Um, for this part, you will need a set of vice clamps. And what we're going to do is we're going to clamp onto the um, damper shaft itself because we need to undo the compression rebound piston in order to remove the seal head from the shock. And so to undo this nut that holds your um, rebound compression piston we need a 11 millimeter socket. You can basically fit that to the top and go ahead and undo that guy. And then I just grab this whole assembly and just pull it straight off, keep it all in order. Um, Obviously if you're not familiar with these, laying them out nicely, um, but I just sit them down on the bench, keep it all happy, and then the seal head, off it comes. So now we have our fresh seal head ready to go. Um, I have this really handy little bullet tool um, that basically sits onto the damper shaft and then allows me to slide the seal head over the bullet tool down onto the damper shaft a lot easier. If you're only doing one of these uh, every six months, it's a bit fiddly to get it on, but it's, it, is, it is doable because I do a dozen or so a week. Uh, yeah, I have a specific tool, so we just slide that guy onto the top, pop it down, move that guy, and for the sake of the video, I will show you the steps of uh, reinstalling your rebound piston. So you've got your base plate, pops on, that's your first compression shim. And third, and then piston drops on. And you 
to rebound shims, ring shim, and then piston nut. And then talk that guy up to five newton meters. Set that on the gauge. Swap it over. Yeah, so now we have set the shock body side and we've got the damper body here. So um, I use WPL 2.5 weight inside the dampers of these shocks. Basically just fill this guy to the top like that. And then make sure the seal head is slid in all the way down against the piston. Turn it upside down. Yeah. Top. And thread that guy back on. And so this new seal head is, I don't know if you can see there, needs to be torqued up to 27 newton meters. Um, you will need a crow foot wrench in order to do that um, with a fitting for your torque wrench. Um, if you don't have that, then I do suggest purchasing one of those. Um, obviously I do a lot of them so it makes sense but yeah if you're doing your home services it is one of those things that's worthwhile doing. Alright guys so obviously now the damper body here is filled with fresh oil. Um, during that process of taking it apart there's always the likelihood that air gets into um, the damper shaft itself and can even get up into the um, rebound and bladder circuit. So what I like to do is always take the bladder out and use the reinstalling of that bladder to basically push any air out of the system um, back through the piston and then we're going to bleed it out of the bottom of the bleed screw here at the bottom of the damper body. Um, so I'm going to take you through the process of getting this bladder out. So basically what you need to do is push this bladder down and it will reveal a little C-clip in there and then you just need a little pick find, I imagine this is not going to show up very well on camera, but I'll put a link to the resource um, in the description that will allow you to see step-by-step -step photos of how this is done. That's your little clip there, it comes out, and then I've got a nice bladder cap puller that makes this job really easy. Uh, if you don't have one of these, which you probably won't, um, just using the end of a shock pump. Um, we'll get this guy out and then just give it a gentle wriggle and that is the bladder. Right, so now we have that out we are going to um, basically use fresh oil in there and we're going to use that fresh, the bladder to push that fresh oil down through the system. Um, in order to do that we have to attach the bleed syringe to the other end of the shock. So undo the bleed screw. Out, install your syringe, and I've just got a basically bought a brand new um, brake bleed syringe, and then just taken the um, the syringe end out of it um, so that I can just use it freely for a hand bleed, and then we reinstall the bladder, push that guy down back into the reservoir just down far enough so that there's room to take your little clip and seat that back into its little shelf undo your cap sweet, now you're ready to start your hand right, bleed so then we're going to crack on with the hand bleed so uh, you want to mount the um, shock into the vise against the rubber insert and then you want to have like 5 to 10, uh, 10 cc's of oil in the syringe at all times so you don't ever draw any air into the shock and because this um, so the, the bottom port of this um, damp body is actually facing the other way so we have to sit it around this side and then you'll probably see when I go to push down on the shock and cycle it through its stroke we should get a bit of air A couple little bubbles and basically what we do is we're pulling 
and pushing on this shock until we see zero air coming out of this thing. So you can see we've got a couple little bubbles coming through here and we want to ensure that all of those are gone before we consider this procedure a success. Right, so then once you have completed that procedure um, and you're cycling it through its travel and there is no more air, go ahead and remove your bleed syringe. Grab your little bleed screw. Go back up. And then what we want to do is reinflate the bladder. So the bladder on this shock is what replaces what is a conventional IFP in other shocks. So other shocks will have a piston that sits in here that has a seal and that basically you fill that with the air and that drives against the, um, the oil inside the shock and basically keeps the oil under pressure, keeps it flowing in all the right places. The only downside to that system is there is a little bit of drag um, and a little bit of friction on that seal, so DVO prefer to use the bladder system, um, which is essentially a balloon inside oil. Uh, it just means that there is uh, zero delay and zero lag and zero friction um, in that system, so when it's transferring between uh, the compression stroke and the rebound stroke, you just get a very active, very precise, very responsive feel um, from the shock. So going to go ahead and fill this guy up. So what I like to do is basically take this guy up to the max PSI which is 200 PSI and once I've done that I will cycle the shock um, through its stroke maybe 5, 10, 15 times and then I will take all of the air back out of the bladder and then I will go through and do a secondary damper bleed. And the reason I'll do that is once you pressurize the system, um, obviously once it's under pressure that compresses any small little bubbles that are in any pockets inside the shock. And once you go and cycle it through and move it around, obviously it makes it a little bit easier to maybe push those bubbles out of any little nooks and crannies that they're hiding in. Um, yeah, and it's just an extra procedure that you can do if you're hand bleeding, uh, which is a little bit more time consuming and a little bit more tedious than a vacuum bleed. Um, but yeah, if you are doing a hand bleed, I do suggest doing that next step to ensure that this thing is perfect. Right, and then from there, you go ahead, reinstall your bladder cap. and put your ear cam back on. Happy as that guys, that is a seal head replacement. Um, yeah, if you have any other questions or there's anything that you would like me to clarify, um, I'm more than happy to answer those. I will leave a link to the resource that DVO have on their web page for basically a step-by-step -step footage and breakdown, uh, photos and breakdown of each of the processes and the tools that you need. Um, Ronnie does an amazing job of talking you through that stuff. Um, yeah, so this video is just an extra resource to help you see a little bit more um, around the detail that goes into it um, and exactly how easy it is to perform this yourself in your garage. Awesome guys, chat soon.